Hey there, folks, um, and welcome to lecture test number one review. I know this says uh, GL 101 up at the top, but uh, in this one instance, uh, the Earth Science folks, uh, your semester started out the same way. All right, uh, we've gone in quite different directions uh, since this test, and we'll continue to do so. But for the time being, um, you guys had the first same material for the first test. So um, also. Also, um, we want to talk about the uh, fact that uh, you're going to want to pay attention to the questions that you missed. Uh, we have the potential for a cumulative final exam at the end of the semester. And I was just telling these folks on campus here, you don't want to miss the same question twicely. Now, I believe I had it set up for the online test so that you... Um, I believe I have it set up online so that you guys see the questions you got wrong, uh, but not the correct answer. So uh, listening to this lab ca lecture cast is your opportunity for the correct answer. All right, without further ado, let's talk about these questions. So you guys uh, here in front of me, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to speak up without raising your hand or whatever. Um, so, you guys, what does the word science uh, come from in Latin? Uh, what does it mean? To know. to know. Beautiful. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, nature of science tells us there are no truths because which of these? Nothing is real? Well, I, I hope not. Uh, scientists can't be trusted. Ma'am, come here. You could. You could. But again, it's a science class. Sure. Uh, see. See. Well, let, no, how about the word? Oh. What is accepted as truth can change if something contrary is supported by experimental evidence. Is that what you meant? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's what he meant. All right. Yeah. All right. And this is uh, this is kind of a, a hokey question. Um, most of these answers are, are not exactly jokes, but you know, not what I wanted you to pick. Um, but yes, there are certainly some philosophies in here that a handful of you might have wanted to check off, and, and I, you know, agree at times. But remember, it's a science class, and we always want to answer our questions from a science perspective, a science basis. The correct ordering of the steps in the scientific method is, this one was maybe a tough one, uh, none of these have, none of these have all of the options in them. Um, but uh, only a couple started with the word idea, so that was a great place to, to start for you. And uh, I think it ends up being uh, D there, idea, research, hypothesis, experiment, and theory. What's missing from this list? What's the final step? Law, yeah. Yeah, law is the final step. And one or two had law in it as well, but. All right, um, these next couple are actually fairly new questions, and uh, I didn't even bother to make up fake answers for these. Uh, process of science, or the scientific method, is which? Very slow and laborious, yes. Yes, uh, nature of science is that? Static and unchanging or dynamic and evolving? Dynamic and evolving, yes. Static comes from the word stasis. Uh, you guys don't actually have the opportunity to tune a radio anymore with a dial. Uh, but back in the olden days, we even had them on our TVs too. Uh, you could go to these uh, places in between the stations and there's all that noise, which we call it static. Um, and if you listen to static, well, you, you certainly wouldn't mean it, think it means the same or unchanging because it's it's all over the place but um, somewhere along the line we started to use that word for that but yeah static means uh, unchanging that's why I put that in there to help out all right enough of that science mumbo-jumbo let's talk about atoms all right everybody uh, the subatomic particle that contributes significant mass what are the names all right, protons and neutrons, excellent. All right, significant in quotes there because 
Yes, electrons have mass, but it is, as we talked about, nothing significant. So the next question there, subatomic particles that contribute no significant mass, that's where we're looking for electrons, yes. All right. Uh, which of those parts lives in the nucleus? Protons and neutrons. Excellent. All right. Which of these vocabulary words applies to the total number of protons in an element? Mass, number, molarity, weight. Atomic number. Good. Atomic number is number of protons. What's the word we use for number of protons and neutrons? Yeah, atomic mass. Good. Good. Boy, if you guys deleted this stuff from your brain already, you're going to be very sad in, in 12 weeks or whenever it is, 10 weeks. Uh, you will see a lot of these questions again, okay, from the first test. Don't, uh, don't forget about it. We'll give you a study guide, don't worry. But um, still, still. All right, when the atomic mass is more than twice its atomic number, that is due to an extra what's is? Neutrons. And for a bonus point, what do we call that kind of element? An isotope. Here's a fake brownie. There you go. You win. Wish I had a real brownie. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't even think they make brownies on campus anymore. They might have some in the dorm cafeteria. Uh, let's see here. Twelve. A uh, substance that cannot be broken down into other substances by ordinary chemical methods. An element. An element. Excellent. Uh, a substance composed of two or more elements. Compound. Compound. Beautiful. Uh, smallest unit? Smallest piece of an element that retains the properties of that element. An atom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a molecule goes for compounds. That's the next one. That's the next one. So this is, this is, um, boy, hallway's extra noisy today. So element, we talk about atoms. Compound, which is the next question. Yeah, compound, that's the molecule one. All right, a little bit about elementaries right now. Uh, which of these is not? This is another thing I hardly ever do, those negative questions. But in this case, um, I would have had to have too many letters to make it viable. So which of these is not an elementary pro pro particle? Uh, electron? No. Proton. Proton. Proton, yeah. I actually almost said the word four times, too. You can write on each answer. Yep. Actually, my, my mark is on the correct answer, oh, okay. but it won't do you any good because you don't have the tests. So uh, what I was telling folks to do is write down the vocabulary stuff that they, they miss, the vocabulary words. All right. Why did I drag you through all this atomic stuff? Um, it's, it's all of those. Okay. Um, elements are made of atoms. Uh, minerals are made of elements. Rocks are composed of minerals, and the earth is made up of rocks or more correctly, it should probably read the other way, right? Atoms make elements, elements make minerals, minerals make rocks, and rocks make the earth. So all of the above. All right, switching gears to some hurricane stuff. And boy, has it been an active hurricane season. Um, nothing, thank goodness, not a whole lot has been hitting and, and causing damage. But boy, there's been a, a bunch of them, a bunch of them. All right, hurricane needs which of the following in order to properly develop? Does it need high water temperature? Yes. Does it need high humidity in the air? Mm-hmm. Low winds up high? Yes, we don't want to erase it. So all of those, all of those are important in hurricane development. Which of those wind speeds officially equals a hurricane? 74, beautiful. When do we name them? Storm, tropical storm, good. Which is just above tropical depression. 
Uh, which portion receives the most intense part of the storm? The eye wall. Excellent. Calm? The eye. Good. Oh, there is a question for order of progression. So it starts with thunderstorms. You've got to remember that one, okay? Starts with thunderstorms. Lowly old thunderstorms grouped together. Over time, they make a depression. That depression continues to grow. We call it a storm, tropical storm. And then if that continues to develop, it turns into a hurricane. So we're looking at uh, B here. All right, hurricanes and tropical storms are recognized by their appearance Ooh, on radar, I suppose is implied there, which causes a swirling mass of clouds to rotate around a blank pressure center. You got two choices. Yeah, it was low. All right, done with hurricanes. And like I said, I had so many more questions on, on all this stuff. Um, the test was huge, so I, I really had to pare it down a little bit. Uh, one of my rules for uh, finals is that I never ask you stuff I haven't asked you already, okay? So if it didn't show up on test one, don't expect to see it on the final. Um, I will only call from, from these questions to make that, uh, to make that test. So. All right, atmosphere stuff. Uh, number one, gas. Nitrogen. Number two, gas. Oxygen. Good. Why do we have an atmosphere? What holds it there? What keeps it there? Our gravity. Yeah. Gravitational pull of the Earth. Beautiful. Uh, 28. Sometimes shows up as two separate questions this time. Again, because I was pressed for points, uh, I made it into one. So both air density and air pressure increase or decrease as you go up. Decrease. Think about it. You're going up. If, if the atmosphere holds the, uh, gravity holds the atmosphere to the earth, it's going to be strongest, closest to the earth. It's going to be densest, closest to the earth. So as you go up, you're going to have less stuff above you. So the answer to both of those is decrease. Exactly. Uh, how about air temperature, though? It yeah, yeah. It vacillates wildly. Where do we live? Which atmospheric layer do we live in? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Troposphere, good. If I were to reword this, uh, and which layer do you live on, what would you pick? Yeah, we, we, we do. You never really think about it that way. We say we live on the crust, but the lithosphere does include the crust. So, um, but that's why I had to throw in atmospheric layer into that one for to make it clearer. All right, speaking of going up through the atmosphere and temperature changes, we've got a vocabulary word for that. Which of those is it? Lapse rate. Yeah, yeah. I only made one of those words up, believe it or not. Thermocline is in water. Geothermal gradient, as you guys know from another question, refers to going into the earth. Uh, lapse rate is the atmosphere, so I made up geothermocline. Sounds convincing, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Hopefully, I didn't trick any of you on that one. All right. Uh, why do we like ozone? What's it do for us? Yeah, UV rays. Filters out UV rays. Can't just say radiation, though, because there's a couple of kinds of uh, radiation. we got infrared. Which we don't mind. And hi. Oh, sure. One second. All right. Um, so we like ozone because it filters out the UV rays. Where's the ozone supposed to live, you guys? It's an island. It's kind of small. I apologize. I see why some of you are struggling to read here. Tiny little print. Stratosphere, nice and high up. Yeah, stratosphere is the one we're looking for. Um. The layer or layers around the Earth that protect us from solar winds and other renegade cosmic radiation. A and C. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys even know Van Halen anymore? That was a joke like good 10, 15 years ago. It was like funny. A band or something. It was like a band or something, yeah. Yeah. 
lead guitarist, just passed away too. All right. So, yeah, magnetosphere and the Van Allen belts, not the Van Halen belts. But there were big old belt buckles with a VH on them back in the day. All right. Which of those protective layers uh, is created by the rotating core of the Earth? The magnetosphere. Excellent. All right. Seasons. This is uh, another one. Um, how many of you got 36 marked wrong? Couple of you, a handful of you, we're getting there. Um, okay. Yeah, this is, I don't want to say I do this a lot, but let me see if I can enlarge it a little bit, sorry. I don't want to say I do this a lot, but um, a lot of these questions came from, oh, that made it worse. Is that any bigger? No, it's exactly the same. That's 200%. Uh, all right, let's see. There's just like a plus button somewhere, isn't there? Should be. There we go. That's about the best I could do without starting to lose questions there. So a lot of these questions came from short answer questions, okay? Um, where you guys would write a sentence or two. So, in order to successfully convert them over to multiple choice, I had to have you guys picking multiple answers. So, please, I know you've, you've gone 12 plus years of school now with teachers telling you, don't stop at the first correct answer. But, seriously, look for more correct answers when, when you're taking my tests, okay? Um, because I, I do that a lot, and I apologize, there's not an apostrophe S and a capital S uh, for sun there. Um, so, distribution of the sun's energy between 23 and a half north and 23 and a half south, yes. Uh, distribution of the sun's energy between the north and south pole, no, too broad. Um, the fact that our earth is tilted 23 and a half off of center, yes, that's the reason that A is, all right. Um, so we're looking at uh, D, which allows you to pick A and C. All right, autumnal equinox, where's the sun? Any equinox, where's the sun? The equator, all right? That's what it means. Equinox, equator. Hmm? Equator? Yeah, equator time. Um, shortest day of the year for us. This is Northern Hemisphere. Winter solstice. Excellent. Uh, just for the hell of it. Longest day of the year. Summer solstice. Beautiful. Equalest day of the year. Supposedly either of the equinoxes. All right. Back to shortest day of the year. Where's the sun? Is it up bright, shining bright and nicely on us in December? No, it's shining on the southern hemisphere. Remember what you heard a long time ago when you were kids, that the seasons are reversed for northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. This is why. All right, we mentioned this one a couple minutes ago. Increase in temperature as you go into the Earth. Geothermal gradient, beautiful. Radius of the Earth, 4,000 miles. Missing a comma. The core of the Earth. Inner core and outer core, right? Which one's who? All right, molten outer and solid inner. The mantle, neither molten nor solid. It's much more like, apparently, silly putty. Yeah, really hot silly putty. Hmm. All right, 
Told you guys this one would be on. Hopefully you remembered it. Unfortunately with these, and this is almost any matching, this is why I'm not a huge fan of matching. Um, if you mess one or two up and you just mess up the whole thing. Uh, so hopefully you got on the right page here. Um, let's just, we're not gonna go in any particular order, but uh, we will just uh, go sort of clockwise. So let's start at C. What is C pointing at? The mantle? Yeah. How about D? Crust, E, inner core, A, B, outer core, B, aspheno, and A, litho. Yeah, we got two weird consonant clusters this first half of the semester. We got sphalerite in lab, and we got aspheno in lecture. And this is something, and I, I actually meant to say something, the folks online unfortunately never get the benefit of, of this, but when a teacher gives you diagrams like this, nine times out of 10, we're teachers, and even if we come off disheveled and so on and so forth, we do have an orderly nature about us. Those are alphabetized, okay? Which is probably so not how you learn them. We just lined up your answers alphabetically. Actually, they're not alphabetic. Yeah, sort of, by core, I guess. Um, Almost alphabetized. <laughs> Funny. Uh, at any rate, go to the diagram first. Say, okay, I know what this is. Then go find that answer in the, over in the question. Say, okay, then that's C. Then go back over to the diagram and say, okay, I know what this one is. This one is. And then slowly but surely, by um, process of elimination, okay, you'll hopefully arrive at if there was one or two that you didn't know, to be able to make a more informed decision. Whereas if you just went through these, Okay, numerically, you know, you're hopping from the asthenosphere to the inner core to the, to the crust. You're all over the place. But that's a function of, of failed alphabetizing. Um, but at any rate, so just something to think about when you're doing a diagram. Because undoubtedly, when you study the diagram, you did just that. You stared at that diagram. You had a way of memorizing it. It's not always going to be the way your teacher asks it to you. So help yourself out. Do it the way that you studied it, if you can. All right, now all those dang numbers. Age of the solar system. Billion, yeah, billion, 4.6 billion. Again, I told you guys, I promised you at any rate, that these questions were going to be matters of magnitude, okay? And that's what we meant, millions versus billions versus thousands. Not going to nitpick 4.6 versus 4.7, stuff like that. Uh, age of the Earth. Again, 4.6 billion, and we can do that because of what uh, theory? It's not the next question, but it is a question. Uh, solar, nebula. solar nebula, beautiful, yeah. All right, anywho, uh, back to the age of the Earth. Uh, what did we use to date the Earth? An asteroid, yeah. And we're able to do that because of... Because of the, the uh, solar nebula. Thank you. All right. Next. 54, I ended up giving you credit. I got to look online for you guys online. Um, it might not be the same exact number. But the folks here, I ended up giving credit to um, A and D. Um, we didn't really talk about the lava flowing out of the earth, okay? Um, undoubtedly it did, all right? Um, and looking back, I'm not entirely sure what I intended to be the right answer for this one. When I took the test myself to make my answer key, I circled A, because I'm thinking about outgassing. That's what was important to me when I wrote, you know, thinking when I wrote this question. But I'm like, oh, heck, lava flowed out of the earth. Yeah, we did talk about it. I mean, we, we, if it cracks open, it's going to bleed. And yeah, all right. So um, you should have uh, potentially a lot of scribbles. But if it looks like I marked uh, 54 wrong for you guys here on campus, um, come up and see me afterwards. Uh, more than likely, I tried to scribble it out and write a little OK next to it. Um, again, you folks online, I'm going to see what I can do. 
uh, with regards to that one. The correct answer is D, and when it boils right down to it. But all right, uh, process that splits water vapor into hydrogens and oxygens in sunlight is called dissociation. Yes, yes, yes. Break from some numbers. More numbers, though. First fossilized evidence of life. All right, three and a half billion. So one billion after it started, we have those blue, well, that's the next question here. The blue-green bacteria, okay, the cyanobacteria. Cyano referring to the color. The stromatolites are not the organisms, okay? The stromatolites are like apartment buildings. They're the what the organism builds. It's like the seashell for the snail. The seashell is not the organism. The snail lives inside of the shell. So that's, that's what's going on here. And if I confused you, I apologize. Um, I tried to make it really clear when I wrote 58 that we're talking about the structure, those things we find fossilized, okay? Those are the stromatolites. The stromatolites were made by the cyanobacteria. More structures, the BIFs, all right, the banded iron formations. It does not stand for biological iron formations. So banded iron formations, they're billions of years old, and yes, believe it or not, they are the source of the world's iron supply. So A, B, and C are all correct in this case. More numbers. Distance from the Earth to the Moon. Quarter million, yep. Uh, how long is a light year? One year long. Six trillion, yeah. Six trillion miles. Approximately. We got that squiggle in there. I think it's 5.8 to be technical. Closest. Closest. Yeah. And if I could make the word closest blink, I would have. I did make it italics for you. Um, the sun is first. And the sun is 93 million miles away from us. But after that, it's a bit of a long haul. Which of these three is the next closest star? It's Proxima, yeah, Proxima. All right. And that one, you got to jump to four light years. So after your 93 million mile ride, you got another four years if you're traveling at the speed of light, which you probably aren't. So significantly longer. What's our closest galactic neighbor called? Andromeda. Good. Yeah. Andromeda. And how far away is she? Two million light years, yeah. That's that's a hefty haul right there. All right, two million light years. So if you're already at six trillion miles for one light year, you have six trillion times two million, whatever the hell that would be. A long way. Uh, we like Andromeda because we feel that she has the same uh, shape that we have, which is what shape? Spiral. Good. All right. And we can't get a picture of our own galaxy, so we look at spiral galaxies constantly. All right. Next, a nebula. Another one of the all of the aboves. A cloud of gas and dust that can condense into a star. Yes. It's full of elements. Why, yes, it is. And is it left over after some stars explode? Yes, it is. So all of the above. Speaking of exploding stars, uh, supernova is one is a term used to describe one way that a star can die. Very true. Uh, supernova. Which of those? Beyond iron or lead? It fuses beyond iron, and it creates nebula. So sorry if I made you 
choose between B and C there. At this point, you probably figured I was looking for all of the above. Um, that one might have been a bit tricky for you. So we're looking at A, B, and D, which is E. And then finally, a little bit of levity to help you get out of here with a smile on your face, maybe. It's an old joke, but it's kind of funny. All right, you guys. And again, whether you finished your first geology test or you finished your first or science test, um, congratulations either way. As I was telling the uh, folks in front of me uh, before I turned the recorder on, your first test with any teacher is, is your hardest, okay? Because you're learning how they write questions. Um, you're learning what kinds of things they think is important. Okay. Uh, also, on top of that, science itself is a, is a different kind of critter uh, to test on than, say, you know, psych or soch or, or history. Um, history, you know, you pretty much can count on having to sit down and, and tell a story on your test. Um, we get a lot more f random factoids and stuff. Okay. And I wasn't lying. I don't make a habit of, of asking you guys about numbers. This test was the exception to that. So look for a whole lot more of uh, vocabulary words coming your way, okay? Learn those vocabulary words. Download those PowerPoint sheets at home, you guys, and you folks here, too. Nothing wrong with taking notes on those PowerPoint sheets. So, um, yeah, that's it. And you guys at home, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And um, I'm going to hit pause on this now.